In this video, we will learn how to quantify heat transfer. Specifically, we'll study how the amount of heat transferred is dependent on the mass of your sample and the identity of the sample. So heat, when it is just joules, so not enthalpy, but just heat, is the variable Q. And um, not all substances absorb heat in the same way because they have different composition, different elements, different properties. So the value that we're going to use specifically uh, for each different compound or uh, molecule that we have is going to be the specific heat value. And that is a value of how much heat is needed to change one gram of the substance by one degree Celsius. So specific heat has some number value and then its units are joules divided by grams degrees Celsius. So this is saying how many joules does it take for one gram of your substance to be raised by one degree Celsius. So some students like to give the number of joules and then divide it by one gram times one degree Celsius. A higher specific heat value means that the substance uh, needs more energy to change its temperature. Um, generally, metals and good conductors of heat have low specific heat values, and then nonmetals have high specific heat values. Um, one of the higher specific heat values and one of the more common specific heat values that we'll see is water, and water has a specific heat value of 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. We'll see that a lot, um, but that's specifically for liquid water. So if we have ice um, or even steam, the specific heat will be different. Um, calorimetry is where we have a calorimeter, which is just an insulated container. Because uh, schools are typically on budgets, we'll typically do them in these uh, nice styrofoam coffee cups um, and then put a lid on it to keep the heat in and then have a thermometer um, but in AP Chemistry, we will use a temperature probe. Okay, so what you've seen before is a formula called Q equals MC delta T, or some people call it Q equals M cap. And um, Q is your joules. Uh, your mass needs to be in grams. Your specific heat, which is big C, is joules per gram degree Celsius. And then temperature can be in degree Celsius or Kelvin because it's the difference in temperature, not the absolute value. So it's just how much does it change by. And so to prove to you, if I take um, 30 degrees Celsius and I minus 15 degrees Celsius, I will get, actually, let's make the numbers a little bit nicer. Let's make it 10 degrees Celsius. I'll get 20 degrees Celsius as my temperature change. Well, 30 degrees Celsius uh, in Kelvin, that's going to be 303 Kelvin. And if I subtract... 10 degrees Celsius, but in Kelvin, so that would be 283 Kelvin. The difference is still 20, and so that's why you can use degrees Celsius or Kelvin. Okay, so let's just look at these. In A, we are asked to solve for Q. So we are given a 445 gram sample of ice. It starts at 58 degrees Celsius, so this is my initial temperature, and we're going to heat it until we go to negative 29 degrees Celsius. So that'll be my t final temperature. I wanna find the change in heat content of my system. Well, automatically what I know is that the heat content is going to go up. We're gonna absorb energy because we're getting warmer. Um, and then the specific heat of ice is 2.05 joules per gram degree Celsius. So my formula is Q equals MC delta T, or we can do Q equals MC T final minus t initial i'm solving for q or the heat and so my mass is 445 grams my specific heat is 2.05 joules per grams degrees celsius my final temperature is negative 29 degrees celsius minus negative 58 degrees celsius and so when i plug that exactly into my calculator making sure i get my temperature signs correct I end up getting 2.65 times 10 to the fourth joules. Okay, not too bad. Now, we could solve for something besides Q in our uh, Q equals MC delta T equation. So here, we're going from 34 degrees Celsius, so that's my initial temperature, to negative 3 degrees Celsius, so that's my final temperature. We're going to absorb 1.41 times 10 to the fifth joules. That makes some sense. 
because we're increasing our temperature and I just want to find the mass of my sample and so, so when I solve for m that'll be in grams and then again we have ice so the specific heat is 2.05 joules per gram degree Celsius so Q Q is 1.41 times 10 to the fifth that is going to be equal to the mass that's what we're trying to solve for c is 2.05 joules per gram degree celsius and then my temperature my final is negative three degrees celsius my initial is negative 34 degrees celsius and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take these two guys i'm going to get a number for that and i'm going to divide it over and what i get is i end up getting 2219 grams and that's of h2o it's just ice and let's say that they wanted us to get delta g so let's say convert or not delta g uh convert to delta h if we remember back to notes one delta h is equal to q divided by moles well I want delta H, I already have Q, that's 1.41 times 10 to the fifth joules. I just need to get the moles of water. So what I need to do is I need to say, okay, um, they, I have 2219 grams of H2O. There's 18.02 grams of H2O in one mole of H2O. When I divide that, I get 123.14 moles of H2O. So I'm just going to take 123.14. And so when I math this out, my delta H is 1145 joules per mole. Okay. Now, one thing that we don't see a lot in AP chemistry, but we could see, is this equation of minus MC delta T equals MC delta T. And this is when you mix a hot and cold substance. So when I mix a hot substance with a cold substance, they will eventually become the same temperature. Okay, so their T final will be the same. With that, the energy from my hot substance gets transferred to the, in, to the cold substance. That is why there's a negative out here to show that for my hot substance, the process is gonna be exothermic. There's not a negative on my cold substance. That's because it'll be endothermic for my cold substance. So 175 grams of aluminum. We're going to drop that into a cup that contains 40 milliliters of ice cold water. So right now what I know is that I'm going to do minus MC delta T because I'm mixing two substances. And my hot substance is that hot aluminum. I mean, it even says that it's hot. We're going to mix that with uh, ice cold water. So M of H2O, C of H2O, and delta T of H2O. And I want to determine the final temperature, and I'm going to call that X. So let's plug in what I know. I have 175 grams of aluminum. The specific heat of aluminum is 0 0.900 joules per gram degrees Celsius. I'm solving for the final temperature, and I want to remember that the final temperature will be the same. So that I'm just going to call that X minus the initial temperature of aluminum, which was 100 degrees Celsius. That will equal the mass of water. The density of water is uh, 1 gram per milliliter. So this 40 milliliters of water is really 40 grams of water as well. The specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius. And then the final temperature of water is going to be this final temperature of aluminum because they will eventually reach thermal equilibrium where the temperature is the same. Uh, but it started at zero degrees Celsius. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this just using math. And I want to make sure I go especially slow because this has a variable on each side and eventually I have to get my like terms together. So if I multiply both of those, I get negative 157.5 x minus 100 equals 40 times 4.184, which is 167.36. And then x minus 0, that's just going to be x. So what I end up having is I'm going to end up doing minus 157.5x. I'm going to distribute that. And then 
negative 157.5 times negative 100. That gives me positive 157.50. That equals 167.36x. I'm going to add over 157.5x plus 157.5x. And what I end up with is I get 15,750 equals 324.86x divided by 324.86. And I just goofed there. It needs to be 324. So x ends up being 48.5 degrees Celsius. This should make some sense because if one thing starts at 100 degrees Celsius and one thing starts at 0 degrees Celsius, their final temperature will be somewhere in the middle. And yes, it does depend on the amount of your hot substance and the amount of your cold substance and their respective specific heat values, but it's got to be somewhere in the middle um, between... 0.1 and 99.9 .9 degrees Celsius. Okay, if I got anything above 100 or less than zero, then I knew my math had gone wrong somewhere. Okay, we're going to do one last problem. And we've kind of already seen a problem like this, so I'm going to just jump right in. And what I want to know is I want to know, calculate the heat necessary to change the temperature of one kilogram of iron from 25 degrees Celsius to 1,000 degrees Celsius. The specific heat of iron is 0.451 joules per gram degree Celsius. Then I want to convert that Q to delta H. Now, I'm not mixing substances, so I know my Q equals MC delta T is my formula. I need to solve for Q first because it asks for heat. My mass is 1 kilogram, so that's 1,000 grams. I know I need to use grams because the specific heat of iron is 0.451 joules per gram degrees Celsius. We started at 25 degrees Celsius and we went to 1,000 degrees Celsius. So 1,000 degrees Celsius minus 25 degrees Celsius. That's because delta T is T final minus initial. And for Q, I get 43,000 or 439,725 joules. That's a lot of joules. And I want to convert this to delta H. Well, we saw in a previous problem, delta H equals Q um, divided by moles. I have Q as 439725 joules. I just need to get moles. I have 1,000 grams of Fe. There's 55.85 grams of Fe and one mole of Fe. So when I math that out, I get 17.91 moles of Fe. So what I can do is say 17.91 moles. And when I divide that, I end up getting 2.46 times 10 to the fourth joules per mole as my delta H. And that should make sense because the temperature went up. I have a positive Q and I also have a positive delta H.